Hello, how you all doing? Today, we are talking about single function devices. Uh, I'm not sure why this popped into my head, but there was this great TED talk that I watched once, and the name of the guy, I completely forget, but it ended up being one of the biggest TED talks. I think the guy was from Liverpool, and I feel terrible that I don't remember his name, because I remember watching his video on TED and being blown away by this this guy. Really well spoken, incredibly dry humour, and uh, talking about education. And it's so annoying to me right now that I don't know his name. I feel like I'm doing him a complete disservice. Maybe I'll do a search and put it into the to the notes. But there was one thing that he spoke about in that that I will never remember, and that was him talking about single function devices. And I never really considered it before, never thought of it before. But if you are a 80s child, if you are a Gen Xer, you will remember having, probably having a either a Casio watch or a Swatch, right? Remember Swatch time? Like three digits, like, I don't know, like 156 was like three in the afternoon or something. Um, and these, these devices, if you really think about it, were single function devices. They just told, told the time. They didn't do anything else. And um, nowadays, you are, well, many generations since then, 90s, 2000s, and right up today with the millennials, is that if something is a single function device, then there's actually a lot less value to having it, to actually owning it, because it only does one thing. So I've been looking for mental hacks, visual hacks, to help me with drinking more water on a daily basis, which just prompted me to buy this massive thing, right? It's as big as my head. It is a gallon of water. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's some writing on it. And the writing on it is different times of the day. So 7 a.m., good morning. 9 a.m., just do it. 11 a.m., keep drinking and then 9 p.m. So from 7 till 9 p.m., you're supposed to drink a gallon of water a day, which is no mean feat. But also, this is not just a single function device because not only can I fill this from my ancient well every morning, we've got a well out back here. Forget, forgive this rug, it, it's always blowing because we need to fix a, a gap in the window here. But uh, I fill this every single day from an ancient well so I get really good water every single day and I'm trying to get to the point where I drink this much water every day and not only is it just like a visual representation so I can like look at it and know how much water I've actually had I don't want an app I don't need an app to tell me how much water I'm having or to buzz me up to notify me I just need a visual indicator to look at and not only is this um, great for visual and for containing the water but I can also work out with it so when I'm walking back from the well, I literally do kind of push-ups with it in the air on both arms. So it's become a multifunctional device for me. And the reason why I wanted to talk about multifunction today is I feel like we're going to go through a period of time, and we're already starting to see it with DeFi, uh, where we have multifunctional blockchains that do more than just you know, do one particular thing. Uh, and probably do it very, very well, but I don't think that's very appealing to a multifaceted, multicultural, multi-processing human being who wants something to do lots of things. Um, and so I was thinking about this this morning is that, you know, I see, I see a lot of stuff in DeFi where people are putting money into farms and then, you know, that, that farm has a smart contract, an algorithm behind it that does a lot of compounding or does a lot of smart market trading, market moving. And I feel like we're going to get to the point where social media was, where social media started out where it was kind of just like a couple of platforms and then we had this ability to broadcast to lots of different platforms and that ended up being too spammy because we ended up sending the same message to like 25 places and 25 you know, people were subscribed to us in 25 places so they ended up getting like 25 updates that were, were the same but we don't have that we're blockchain right now uh, and I got really excited about two years ago when the word or words badgered about were atomic swap I love the idea of atomic swaps and the reason for that is that I love 
the the notion that we can like travel through life having our hobbies interested in different platforms interest in different communities maybe we have a different kind of like hobby we only do for so many months of a year and so it got me really excited when it was like oh yeah you'll be able to atom atomically swap from one thing to another now the way that the way that that works is that it's almost like a gateway or a portal of such you might have one particular thing you might have a usd and you want to turn it into bitcoin or bitcoin to ethereum or maybe you have some dtube tokens and you want to turn them into something else but you can I, I just love the definition of it so marvel like comics to me like just atomically changing something from one thing it's like a replicator on enterprise changing one thing into another thing and so that got me like excited that we'll be able to build up our stores of values in these different digital economies wherever we spend our time there'll be a token associated with it um, it'll probably be just accumulating in the background I've seen people do this on discord People asking questions, getting paid out with a token for their participation, their questions, their engagement. I think that's all hugely valuable stuff. If you think about it, it's almost like a, it's almost like a basic income, right? You're earning basic income for being involved and being around those people. I mean, I get at the minute from now being a partner on YouTube, I get about a dollar a day. That means that somewhere in the world that does like a dollar deal, I can at least feed myself like on a dollar a day. But it also shows me that the centralized platforms, once you've got over the permission economy hurdle of having the right kind of look and feel and people watching your stuff, the 4,000 hours and the 1,000 follower thing, then you get the drip feed. You get that little drip feed of money that comes in. And if you multiply that by 10 or 15, 25x that thing into different income streams, you could probably live off that. You could have these robot versions of you that are doing all that stuff while you're sleeping so you can sustain yourself which is fascinating in itself because that never existed before you used to have to work a job for 25 30 years pay off a mortgage etc etc we've got all this kind of opportunity now because of having a digital expression of ourselves so i feel like a lot of people are going to be looking for multi-functional devices multi-functional blockchains blockchains that grow and adapt with you i was talking to a client yesterday and they're thinking of some fascinating stuff with LoRaWAN. And if you imagine being a child and growing up with LoRaWAN, this like low powered device that can last on a battery for a year or two, something that you don't necessarily have to maintain, it's just like bursting small packets of information. Depends how you design it, what those small packets are, but they could be they could be a humidity meter or, or, or a heat sensor or something stitched into your clothing or, or your bag or your trainers. Something that's on you as a person transitioning through the world, supplying little bits of data for that time and a place where you are anonymously to a blockchain and getting paid out in tokens for providing that drip feed in, not having to necessarily worry about power maybe the version two of that will be a little solar power generator thing that just keeps it charged like a little bloody nuclear battery that keeps it going for the first 20 years of your life fascinated to think about it that the whole journey of your life could be tokenized so i think i i think we're going to end up with the value proposition of blockchains being multifaceted in the same way that you know, car insurance went from just like insuring the car to now providing you with, you know, you only pay the first 50 pound or the first 100 pound and you get a higher car for free if, you know, your car can't be towed or, or it's off the road at the garage or whatever. There's all this value added on. So it'll be fascinating to see what happens when governments launch their own tokens because I feel like they'll be still on version one of their token while all the other blockchains that have been around for three or four years and longer they're like just elevating the game now they've they've scaled they're just waiting for customers to come in so now they've got a chance to start adding stuff on top of it i think the people who do that the best will end up getting more of the market share because i think people want multifunctional stuff i don't just want a watch that tells the time i want this watch this little tracker which costs 30 pound does everything like the heart rate uh, amount of steps that i did there's a GPS in there so I can find out, you know, there's just a load of multifunctional stuff that gives me a lot of value in my life inside of this device for a low price. And I think the same thing will happen 
for blockchains. I'm pumped about my uh, I'm pumped about my bottle though because uh, it really shows visually shows me every single day of how much I should be drinking water wise, and I'm definitely noticing a difference after having it for like all of this week. So it's Friday now, so I've had it all this week, and I've been trying to drink a gallon a day. I've been get, been getting halfway with it every single day, but uh, I'd love to hear back of what a perfect blockchain would be for you in terms of feature set. I definitely see something coming along where you can pay money into it, it compounds over the years, maybe there's a, a splinter off service for me uh, for me to be able to like put all my assets into a digital contract, smart contract that I can leave with my solicitor for the next generation for my daughter. I just think there's going to be some fascinating expressions of what blockchain can do in real time. Imagine the whole distribution process. I know a lot of distributing companies are using um, QR codes and LoRaWAN at a distributor level and then also tracking the movement of that stuff on an immutable blockchain because they want immutable proof. They don't want proof that can be changed and corrupted. They want to see the whole journey. And I think businesses that start adding that element onto their business will end up with more customers in the long run because people are asking for that stuff. They want to know the source of it, where it came from. Is it edible? Like, I, you, you only have to look at NFTs to see on a smaller scale how that's gonna affect everything else, right? Yes, okay, I understand your average Joe is gonna be like, okay, a collector's card that has a digital proof, that's way more than they've had before. Like, you, you would have to get them like, I don't know, sent to somebody to prove that they're actually real. Whereas having the ownership on a digital blockchain that can't be changed, um, that just adds so much value to that product, no matter what the price is. It just adds another level, another dimension to it for a collector to actually collect it. Now, if you apply that to everything else in life, everything you do, every interaction, everything that you buy, everything that you trade, every house that you live in, if that has some kind of immutability to it, what kind of applications blockchain applications can you make? What kind of smart contracts can you make? Will there be smart contracts that you can opt into for hobbies that you like, that do certain things for you? Maybe if I go and train at a gym for five years, do I get like shares in that gym? Or do I, yeah, there's just so many different levels to it that get me excited about a blockchain still, regardless of the price, regardless of like green and and red uh, indicators. The, the the idea of the immutability part of it is what keeps me around, I think, into it. But yeah, single function devices. I will try and find out the name of that guy because I recommend to anybody to go and watch it. All right, you have a good Friday. I'll catch up with you soon. I'm gonna have a good weekend. We've got England versus Scotland tonight, eight o'clock. Bottle of wine, some beers, some nice food. I'm looking forward to it. Have a good weekend, bye.